bitch better have my money. Hey, you guys. It's Mark, and, um, well, Patrice O'Neill passed away, and I'm, I'm upset. I'm, uh, sad. I feel a tremendous amount of loss. When I heard that he had a stroke, I was devastated. And the fact that no one was really getting in to see him or, or, or I wasn't getting any information. I had no idea, you know, what was happening, but I thought about it a lot in the days that followed and, and just the thought of all I heard was that he wasn't talking. And, and I thought I, that's just horrible that Patrice of all people isn't talking. And I, I didn't know what it was going to happen. And obviously the worst that could have happened, happened. And I'd just been thinking about it a lot. I knew it was bad, and now he's he's passed away. And I've had to do this a few times now in the last couple of years. I mean, since I've had this podcast, you know, is, is say something about great comics. And Patrice was great, and we're going to, I'm putting up this interview I did with him um, out of respect, uh, in memory of, and, and, and as all I've got uh, left of him in my mind. I, I mean, there's part of me I was very happy that I maybe I didn't wasn't allowed to uh, to see him. I'm not in New York that much, but I did ask if it was possible. It wasn't possible. Because I want to remember him like this, like uh, how he was when I talked to him. And how he was when you're around him. I mean, this guy was a tremendous force of comedy and of just, he just had some fucking magnitude, man. And I'm not talking about his physical presence. I mean, when you were around Patrice O'Neill and you were in his line of fire or in his focus, it was electrifying. And the guy had huge balls. He had a, a complete an original point of view. You may not have agreed with him. He may have uh, pissed you off, but God damn it, you had to reckon with Patrice O'Neill. And if you waited just a minute and you listened to him and you heard him out, you will be you would be shocked, provoked, and hysterical. He was a completely unique guy, and just a fucking thrill to be around and to watch work. Hilarious. And I'm just I I'm, I'm gonna fucking miss him. I I don't. It's just it's just horrible. The thought of him being in a state where he couldn't express himself or he couldn't talk, or he was just completely incapacitated was just horrifying. And I and I had those moments where I would would think about that, and and I and I did think about it. To uh, to picture him like that in a chronic state was uh, horrifying to me given just how fucking vital that dude was how fucking funny he was but he will be fucking remembered by me for sure as being as being a, a, an, an amazingly uh great comic and if you haven't heard this interview uh please listen um, we're re-releasing this interview so everybody can hear it. If you've heard it already, uh, do what you will. If you want to listen to it again, here it, here it is. This interview was a thrill for me to, uh, to sit down and talk to Patrice and to, uh, cause boy, he could, he could fucking get in your head, man. He really could. And it was, uh, it was an amazing thing to experience. He was an amazing thing to experience. I'm going to miss him, and, I, and I'm sure uh, a lot of you will too. So let's um, let's listen to my conversation with Patrice, and um, because this is how I want to remember him. Sometimes you get that depressed thing where you go, you know, I, I wish it was important to more people. You know, I wish <laughs> I self want self pity thing. Yeah, where you like, I really yeah. want more people to. I'd be happier if more people 
knew who, knew I, was. who I was. Do you get that too? I just will be happier. What do you think? Because I get that all the time too. I, I don't. I, what do you think it is? What are we not doing right? How come I can't? What I th- I've grown to believe that I'm just not for everybody. What the hell am I going to do? I just had this conversation as, with uh, with Opie man, and it's like I'm coming to the. I think I'm thinking that if I was a vegetable and I was a Brussels sprout, yeah, and I was going. Man, I know people love Brussels sprouts. Yeah, I just have I to. just have to get out to the people. <laughs> but you go, you know what? People might not like Brussels sprouts, man. <laughs> <laughs> I so might have what I have. I don't I think I, I because to, I yeah. see the the laughter and the reaction from people who love me and I never want to turn my back on the people who actually enable me to exist. That's good. You should hold on to that. Yeah, but I'm it, it, but I see their reaction. I see the people that yeah. I that I do touch. I touch them on such a real Deep. level yeah, yeah, yeah. that I go, "There's no way I can be this irrelevant in terms of socially irrelevant in terms of numbers." Well, let's let's talk about it because, uh, in the sense that, because I'm the same way. I'm talking to Patrice O'Neill. Like I have real loyal fans. I don't have a lot of them. They're they're not. You know, I and can't. They just, and they come out and you and and I'm gonna ask you. Do they? Do you see the same people every single? Oh yeah, yeah. They'll come out two or three times. Some of them will bring me presents. You know, I had a woman last night. I was in Minnesota. She came up and she said, "Before you did that joke, I started to cry a little bit." I mean, like you know, deep shit. And and the podcast is helping out a lot. But you know, when I start to think, it's like, why? How come I don't have a wider appeal? And I think it's because we got too much fucking heart. I, I think that like when you do comedy that's honest. And you're taking an emotional risk. That means that's real discomfort there. That means you're not ending a joke with like, and now everything's good. There's no- and, and, and you know, someone told me this kid, this actually this this kid opened up for me. He's a fan of mine, but he's a comic. But he 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 revealed himself to be a real fan. Yeah. Um. And uh, we talked, and um, I think he's been wondering. About uh, you? About me, like going, why? He watches yeah, I get that. and goes, uh, why? Because yeah. I think a lot of people feel um, there's people out there that go, if Mark doesn't do it, how can I do Like they yeah. need you to make it so that they believe that they can also. I, I'm in that category. Like they go, why isn't they try to really go, well, why isn't Patrice this? Oh, and they, they try to go, oh, that's why. But really, there's a lot of people in the business who are terrible human beings. I'm, I'm not a terrible human being. I'm actually, you know, I, I'm loyal. Uh, even, You're an honest guy too, which can work against us. I, it's, it's. I'm, I'm trying to be honest because I, I know that I have skeletons. I know that I have issues. I know that I have uh, things in my life <clears throat> that, you know. I always said I know. I know why. Um, I, I know exactly why Michael Richards and Pee Wee Herman, why their careers suffer, is because they have put themselves out there as these people who were like fun loving right. their characters Clowns. are f- just yay yeah yeah so when one goes ah nigger and the other one is jerking off um he has a kid show it's like he was living a lie and when people expose you for lying like the tiger woods thing i always yeah. thought he should go hey man look my wife if he had said this my yeah. wife won't lick my asshole yeah i love it licked yeah this waitress licks my asshole <laughs> yeah <laughs> I should be able. When should he have said that exactly? As, as soon as they put him in a corner, as soon as I notice something about and this yeah. is talking about comedy. Yeah. I notice when I'm. I notice a long time when I'm bombing. Yeah. Uh, when I'm bombing, the worst thing to ever do is try to not bomb. The best thing to do is take everybody to die. Everyone dies. <laughs> I don't. I'm not dying. Yeah. You're gonna die. Yeah, with yeah, me. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna try to win you back because I notice about people. Yeah. People are hot when power corrupts. Yeah. When an audience sees that you're struggling and then you're trying not to struggle and you need them not to struggle, they get worse. They don't get better to try to help you dig yourself. They want to. Put the dirt on your grave yeah, and watch yeah. you fail. Yeah. So I go, you know, well, guess what? You're gonna watch yourself. You, everyone's gonna fucking be miserable. That and 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 when there's hecklers yeah. in the audience, 
who are letting and and, and I, I don't get mad at the hecklers. I get mad at the people. You're gonna allow this guy to ruin our relationship. You know this is going nowhere. You know that I'm finished with him. Yet you won't have him removed. Yeah. You you'll let this piece of shit fuck up your. You know what? You getting what you fucking deserve. You're you're letting it happen. You fucking weak people. You're weak. So and you think this might be why we're not we're not I love honest shit, man. Yeah, it's the only way but when you do that, have you ever pushed them? Have people walked? I used to walk because I do a lot of stuff about women. I I generally don't like what women are. Which is what? As I generally don't like living in a world where being what a man is 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 a horrible thing and no matter what a woman is it's a wonderful thing this is what they're doing they are the society they're bringing men down and women are up but they don't understand women are getting their their cue from men meaning so if you're a woman and you're going i want to be the most successful whatever I want to be, you're looking at the most successful man. You're competing mentally with men. I want to get the most. Women aren't going, I want to be. Why don't women think in terms of the king and queen system? It's a beautiful system. The system is, if I'm a man, okay, and I see a fucking bum woman. A woman has nothing. She's dumb. Yeah. Fucking. If I marry her, she's now the highest level she can be. Mm -hmm. She's the queen. Mm -hmm. You can't get higher than the queen. Right. It's a great position. Right. It's the baddest bitch in the land. But the queen is the king's bitch. She can't. She. But here's the reverse. And this is why mm -hmm. these dominant women who can't find happiness is because the queen in the system, if it's just the queen, right, and the queen of England is the queen because her father didn't have any sons. So she, he didn't have a king to take her, so she had to, his, his heir was a woman. Mm -hmm. So now she's the queen with no king. When she gets married, that guy is not the king. He's a fucking, he's the queen's <laughs> husband who doesn't get elevated to his highest position. Right. A, a, a man at his highest position helps a woman be at her highest position. A highest position woman who has a lower man can't be happy. It's nature. It's fucking nature. All right, okay, so these, these points of view, that, I mean, this, this, uh, this assessment of how it all works, could this be part of why you're not as popular? Yes. Every time I talk, I go, this is ridiculous, but... I, you know, I have a woman who, who who has been around me a long time. That's this is a woman you you were with. I'm with now. I mean, my Your queen. My, my queen, my my woman, uh -huh. who, in every woman's fashion, is trying to take me down. It's like Valkyrie. How is that? Operation Valkyrie. These bitches, <laughs> they hate being women, man. I'm telling you, but Mark. wait, let me ask you. So let me just understand something. So you're saying that that women only have the model of success and power that men have established. So when they try to operate within that, they're acting like men. Yes. Which means that they are denying themselves their their queenness and will never be happy. Thank you. That's what you're saying. It's like another analogy, more or less. I try to help my girl. I have to think of analogies every day. Oh, I know. You're very girl. good at it. Uh, I have to think in, in analogy terms. Uh huh. Uh, it's like you meet, if you're a, a, an animal, okay, yeah. you, if you're a great white shark. Okay. There's a woman, great white sharks, and there's men, great white sharks. Yeah. To every other animal, uh, great white sharks are just vicious. No other animal looks at a great white shark and goes, uh oh, here comes the girl version. Yeah. Uh oh. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. a lot of men, okay, uh -huh. we go and try to date within our species. Uh, uh, most male great whites yeah. say, oh, wow, here go a girl, girl, oh, I want to. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But We're the women same. go, yeah. I'm, I hate the way um, great whites treat the woman great white. Yeah. So I'm going to now date these penguins or these seals who look at me and they run in fear uh -huh. and I'm going to catch one and I'm not going to eat it. I'm just going to play around with it and have this particular animal who looks at me with this fear and reverence yeah. just go, Oh my God, you didn't kill me. Yeah. I didn't kill you because you know, that's why these gorgeous women date these weak men and they, and they right. But and, aren't they usually doing that just to piss off the great white? No, they're so doing they it because they go, I'm not going to sit here and deal with this other great white. So what happens, though, is they, they're dating their food, 
And after a while, they go, <laughs> they're dating I, their food. I fucking hate this guy. I hate what he is. He lets okay. me do anything I want. He fucking, I talk to him like he's a piece of shit. I spit at him and he just does nothing. I'm going to eat him. I'm going to eat him. <laughs> then she's going, how do I feel like a woman? You fucking date this man. Yeah. Great white. And you yeah. go and you go fuck with him. And this great white goes, hey, bitch, look, you don't talk to me like that. I don't let no fucking girl sharks treat me like that. I'm not bitch. a penguin. Yeah, I got to deal with <laughs> niggas not... trying to hunt me. I got to deal with other man sharks trying to bite me. I got to deal with you, bitch, yeah. with your mouth. Yeah. You you know, no, that dun -dun music ain't yours. That's mine, motherfucker. I'm, <laughs> oh, come on. I'm, type, I'm top of the food chain. <laughs> but I have to. How does this analogy work with your woman? It, it, she, we, we, she, I'm the longest relationship she's ever been in. We've been together a uh, good, good seven years or some shit. She's been around a long time. I, I do an old joke where it's like, uh, you know, she, I, she's been with me for eight years. I've been with her for five. <laughs> and, and, and it's like, I didn't know we were together at that time, but you know how it is. So I, she's, she's been living truth for a long time where she's, at first it was charming to her. Now she's trying to, to, um, I call it karate class, man. Um, all the things that she, when, when, when I was, the, when she was strictly the student and she looked at me as the master mm -hmm. and I teach her her first kick, like, okay, baby, here, go hi -ya. It's like, oh, she feels good. She's mm -hmm. kicking. She's mm -hmm. learning moves. She's learning karate. Mm -hmm. Now this bitch has a seventh degree black belt in my bullshit. Yeah. And now she thinks she can actually beat me. And she's hard to beat. You, you start, back in the day, <laughs> I could flip her right on her head verbally. Whap! Yeah. She's like, oh my God, sorry, master. But each level she wants to go up, she thinks she, she don't want to go out into the, into the world and try her shit. She wants to try it with me. And I'm the motherfucker who taught her, and I'm the motherfucker who loves her. But she's always trying to gain an advantage uh, over me, and I'm the motherfucker that she... And that's where things go bad in relationships, I think, is because, you know, your woman starts to look at you like, I can be... He ain't the guy. I go, look, man. If you need to go find yourself another man, if you need to go do what you got to do, um, I'm not going to allow you to make me unsexy to you because I know how to not do it. I know that you're going to try to you're trying to gain something. So you're saying like, OK, like because I've been in, in situations where once they get hip to your bullshit, I mean, you're you're. Your motto is good, but there there might come a time where they're just sort of like, not only am I hip to your bullshit, but I'm tired. Yes, she is tired. She's tired of me. She is, but I'm like, go be tired, because I'm telling you, you're thinking like a square. You're thinking like all these bitches who don't have a man. Go join them, because as, as of eventually you're going to, what she's looking for out of me is to do some of the things that her food does. <laughs> Can't you just be like my food once or twice? No, bitch. No. no. Why don't you want to give her a little of that? It's not giving anything. It's <laughs> I'm living me yeah. and you're living you. At some point, you got bored. With See, we don't have. This is deep shit. I'm not sure it's right. It might not be right. It might be sophistry. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It might no, be no, no. some bullshit. I, I, no, I think it is your life. This is just, it's a point of view. It's not, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a deep point of view and it's been around for a while. I think it to be fair. It's a fair thing. If but what about what about mother? What about that? You know, be a good mother. Take care of your shit. That's inconsequential, and, man. I don't even think. Look, I'm gonna tell you how far. Do I we know. have kids? Do you have kids? I, I want kids, but I, I I'm I'm having. Uh, I don't have any, but I would like some. I mean, my girl has a kid. She came with, and I actually what the wonderful thing now. I think. Uh, she the kid lives with you. N no, but I was gonna say. I, I I look at people with kids and then I go, you know, I, as a stepfather, quote unquote, mm. you know, her father's still in her life. You know, father, she has a good father. He's not an asshole. It's just that I'm a I'm with her mother, you know. So and and we get along. She loves me. I love her. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is, that's great. Is I really like being sometimes dad. I'm like, wow. If this if she had to be my kid all the time, I'd be like, hey. Yeah, but yeah. but don't but isn't there a different level of appreciation for that woman you're with and her relationship with her daughter that transcends this objectification riff that you're going on? Uh, it, the thing is, I never waver from from a, this is my standpoint. My standpoint is a natural feeling. It's a natural feeling. It's nature. I'm not. I'm not. This is not a social standpoint. Like, okay, being a mother, no, I a, good, a good mother, okay. is wonderful. I yeah. love my girl's a good mother. She's a good woman, and and I'm. I, but I'm saying. You're missing the part of me being a good father, 
uh, well, me being, okay, a, good, well, me being a, good, a good man, yeah. me being a good son. Okay. Okay. First yeah. of all, what my mo- as a mother, um, people will go, you have a mother. And it's like, yeah, but my mother was somebody else's bitch at one time, meaning my mother did things to men. And she's told me this, mentally fuck with men. I mean, like, would she go, I've done this, okay, as a woman. Yeah, but we do it too, right? But, but we're not, see, this is the thing, Mark. You can't always. My, you know how my girl got me? How? I was a guy who was this terrible misogynist when she met me. I'm a, I'm a Unlike, lot less. No, it's less. I'm telling you, yeah. a lot less. Yeah. Um... Because I, I have submitted to the fact that a lot of things I've done, I don't do. Like, look, it. What's your, what's your big fear um, in relation to women? That you're going to cry? That you're going to. What, what, I mean, what, do you, what, what, what is the armor about? What is the fight? The fight is, um, and that's an interesting question, but I'm going to be very honest. I just want my girl to know that. Um, my natural instincts stopped once I said I lo- I made a decision to be quote unquote a good guy. I know that fucking a lot of women is bad for her. She don't want it. She she wants commitment and she wants she wants uh, uh, uh you know a monogamous relationship. And I give it to her. And I just want her to know that it's not. I just want her to always value the sacrifice. I want her to value that. All I do, really, all I do is want women to understand what we are, what we are. I want a lot of fucking women. Like I just every day, every day Mm. I see a woman that you, I go, man, I want the opportunity. I have a decent house, have a decent car. I know I have. It's like being a fisherman, right? Right. And this is I again. You you fish as a fisherman, Mark. Yeah, yeah. As a fisherman. As a fisherman. I I, I if have, you're a sport thrown, fisherman, cast my yes. line out as a sport yes, fisherman, sir. which is a, a lot different from fishing to live. Fishing to live. Yeah. You just and thank you. Okay. <laughs> Do you see how you get that context? Okay. Yeah. Now. You go out there and you try to catch this fish. Yeah. Okay? Uh-huh. And you do. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Like any other sport fisherman, you catch the fish. You, gotta throw you it show back. it to your friends. Yeah. You sh- you take a picture. Yeah. You look at it. Yeah. And you throw it back in the water. Right. Now, your girl is in your life or your wife or anybody else yeah. who's a significant person in your life. You don't show her. The is fish. a fish. Yeah. That jump back on the boat after you threw it in the water. <laughs> Have you worked this out before? Because yeah, yeah because you caught her. Yeah, she keeps jumping back on your boat, mm-hmm. and you're sitting there going, "Listen, you don't come out because usually some fish get the idea that they swim back into the ocean and and hope you come back again to catch them, or you got lucky enough to catch them. But the fish that's in your life." was just flapping and around your boat she would she'd run all the other fish away so that at some point you go fuck i i, I just listen you know and then she goes you go look i i i my job is to catch you and throw you away then she's like what the fuck is that what i am to you and as a man who's has that that dichotomy yeah. you're, you're just trying no 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 no, no, no i don't, don't no, misunderstand. i'm not a piece of shit yeah no you're the last fish i was i wanted to catch you and then you know be the last fish then it's like okay good okay now we're dating we so every I time get, you yeah. come back so every time you come back now now okay yeah you go okay i got this fish now your fish goes you love me mm-hmm. you go yeah yeah i love your fish all right now that you love me why do you still have your boat <laughs> <laughs> and why do you still have your pole and all your bait so are you saying you want me to stop being what I was to get you? So what that means is when I stop being what I am, yeah. you start to look at me and go, you ain't even got a boat. There's a, there's, an, a, there's a time where they go, you don't even have a boat. That guy has a boat. You used to be this great fisherman. But why don't you say, well, you don't, you can't even swim anymore. They, they'll never be able to not swim. My girl is gorgeous. If she plays her cards right, dude, there's never a time where she can't get something. Look, my girl got me to fuck with her. 
she she was waiting. She just was waiting. She liked me, and she was waiting for some reason. You see my girl, and you go, why is she waiting for me to fuck her? Which gives me more arrogance because I know that women are better than us because a guy like me could get a girl like my my woman. It's because they love differently than we do. Yeah. What she did is finally, after all this time of kind of waiting and kind of being there, kind of she, 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 she invited me up to the house, and she put a t-shirt on and and went to take a shower and stuff. And she's talking to me and same old, same old. And she went to go turn the TV and bent down so that her fucking pussy and asshole was just showing as she picked something up. And she knew I was looking, and I'm like, oh okay, it's in my face. And so she's, mm -hmm. and by the way, his arrogance of having a vagina. She can actually, if I didn't fuck her then, she can actually be officially uh, 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 have the right to say that I'm gay. Just because she showed asshole and pussy and I didn't go for it then. Now, I am a fucking fag then. That's how arrogant you can have be with having a pussy. You, there could be no point where you could show your balls and asshole as a marker to to pick a woman up mm. or to fuck a woman yeah. and it be acceptable. Yeah. If you showed your asshole and balls mark and 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 as a as a hey look at look at this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, that you saying you saying I make them objects? No. I could never do what they do. What she did to get dick. It, I I laugh at her to this day because it's like do you see when you showed your asshole and pussy that's right but in your model that's how else is it going to go they're acknowledging that they've got this and that you want and it and let's they want go this. back to okay where there's never i know you've been, you've never met a woman mark hmm. who has taken responsibility completely for what she does <laughs> exactly <laughs> because that laugh says you didn't because you would have had a contrary opinion uh -huh. you've never met a woman that went yes i am i'm just wrong <laughs> now it all right so why don't you present this to the people maybe maybe the reason why you're feeling disappointed in how many people understand you or or how many people want to be in your audiences that maybe the comedy thing is just part of it maybe you need to build this this uh, larger broader fellowship of 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 rough truth uh, this almost this almost pimp shit in some oh way. It, uh, to be honest it, it 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 in in my in my in my worst i i, I can really say the worst days i i where i had a lot of women around um, I didn't, I didn't date any of them, but they all, they just love me. Mm -hmm. I go, damn it. These girls like me enough. These girls listen to me enough. I'm not hiding any of them from each other. Mm -hmm. I could be a pimp. And I realized why I couldn't be a pimp. Cause I'm a, I'm a good man. This, all of this shit is based on the, this is not based on being a pimp. This is based on being a good man where I go, Holy shit, I realized something. I could never live with myself as a man. Um, allow my woman to sell, uh, pussy and give me all the money. I, I, I couldn't do that shit. And I realized there are women who get hit in their relationship and you go, why are you staying with that man? Cause I love him. Why? There's women that work a nine to five and give every dime to a fucking bum that's in the house. I just love him. She's a fucking hoe. And he's a pimp. Now, it's a matter of do you abuse that. I don't abuse my woman. I just don't want her abusing me, Mark. That's it. I don't want her abusing the fact that I'm a good man. Okay. Well, okay. Well, now we've got that uh, about. And, and I and I believe that you are a good man and your system seems to work I, for you. I do, man. She's it's been, a hard she's, system to sell out there in the road because what you're saying, a lot of what you're saying, it may be true to a lot of men, but a lot of men aren't going to admit it publicly and they certainly aren't going to sit there in a comedy room and listen to you say that and look at their woman and go, huh? That's us. Well, I, but, I, but I'm saying like, like Lopez, I've read this thing. Lopez got busted cheating. He probably got busted prostitute. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. it might be some fucking bullshit. Strippers, right? Right. Yeah. Pay for some pussy, supposedly. Right. But you, if you look at... If you look at a lot of the guys' wives, I mean, George Lopez, his wife got a... She gave him a kidney. She's a fucking soldier. And, and as a man, if he cheats on her with strippers or yeah. hookers, yeah. as a man, yeah. we, there should be men that stand up, Mark, and go, okay, in the cheating world... He did the right thing. 
He doesn't have a side bitch that he has kids with. He's not keeping. He went and got some. These girls look better than my wife pussy. He's the most. And I'm paying for it. And and it's not going to follow me home. Yes. But yet it followed him on the newspaper. He's the the computer. He's the most famous Mexican in the world. He's a funny looking guy, you know, and no, no offense. If he's, if he's honest with himself, bad skin, funny looking face. And but there's I, some I, motherfuckers that will fuck him. And he I should be able to fuck a little bit. I understand that. But, you know, the argument that, that works against that in your system is that women can, they're always going to be able to get another one. You know, maybe not as good as once. You're saying that the power of George Lopez is that his shit is so good, that his home is so hot, that his money is so good, that he should be entitled to do that, and she should have to put up with and that. No, th- that's what I'm saying. He did the right thing. He did but the he got right caught. thing. He got caught. Okay. Meaning he didn't. He could, in all reality, yeah, go. This is what's gonna be like, bitch. Yeah. And she goes, George, shut the fuck up. You go, I'll give you a, a $2 million, and you can get the fuck out of my face. He didn't do that. He snuck to try and, like, I, again. Well, okay, so what do you think he's doing now? Now? Okay. Me and my girl discuss if this this happened to us. I, I always try to put scenarios there. Sure. If she gets caught cheating, I said, I'll, I'll, I'll stay with you, but you get demoted down <laughs> to where you don't want to be no more. Which is, you got no say. My girl got say. Yeah. But at one point, she worked hard to have a say. Mm-hmm. Do you think you should be doing that? Right. Do you think you should be? Right. And not afraid of whatever, like me, mind your business, bitch, uh, whatever, but do you think you should be doing okay, that okay. as my partner? Okay. Um, it, it, I told her if, she, if I get caught, what am I going to get demoted down to? Okay. Mm-hmm. More, I'll get, me getting a demotion means you get a demotion, actually. Meaning, if you, what are you going to do? You have to leave me. But I'm not going to stay in your life, right? If I, if I get caught fucking doing something that I didn't want to do and I hurt you, what happens is I'm not going to sit here and live in apology for the rest of my life. I, I felt the same way. I'm not going to sit here and have yeah. you hold me hostage and take away really what, what, our relationship That's is right. built on, That's which right. is you think that I'm yeah. a great man. Yeah, this is an interesting point because this is something that happened to me. Like when my wife left me for me being an angry motherfucker and I, and whatever, you know, the, the reason she left, I understand. Mm-hmm. But the condition of the leaving was I want a three month trial separation to figure out what I want to do. So I, you know, I was upset. I did everything I could to get her back mm-hmm. on some level. And, and quite honestly, you know, I've never admitted this before. Anger management. Well, I tried that. I tried it. And, you know, and I was upset. You do it I, for yourself, though. Well, well, no, I did it for her. You know what I'm tried. saying? It, that's the, nah, that's what right, you that's do. That's right. You do for yourself. When I knew, though, like about two and a half months into this, I'm like, you know, fuck this. I can't hold on to anymore. I gotta, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go fuck somebody. Mm-hmm. And I, and I know I did that, but I waited almost three months. But after I fucked somebody, I knew I got to file for a divorce because I'm not going to live an apology for the rest of my life. Even if I got her back, I don't want to have to answer for that, and I don't want to have to live an apology. And, but you still could have got through that because, look. Um, she didn't love me enough. She had some other dude. That she had enough. And, but she, see that, she got the other guy and, with the better job, with the better family, she better more deal. money, That's, that's what guy. it happened. She, see, we don't even better de- Look, it, we don't even better deal women. We 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 oh, yeah, just like I, pussy. I, <laughs> is that a girl in the trash can? Let me see what she look like, baby. How you doing? Why are you in the trash can? It's it's we're not even, we're not even better dealing them. I know. We're not. I I, I can't. I know it doesn't matter. Being good to a woman for us is a commitment to ourselves. <laughs> okay. It's a commitment to the fact that we go. This is what they want, and this is what they think is mm-hmm. is the right thing to do. And we we're, we're decent people. We go. You know what? She's right. This is, let me stop trying to fuck everything that moves. It's probably some weird, like, here's my, it's probably some weird compensation for something. Mm. And I go, let me be good to this girl. I'm not, I'm not going to get better. I might be able to get better, uh, good looking, or I might be able to get better decent, decent but ne- not, never the, not together with her. Now let's address race the same way we address sex. Well, I would say it's the same thing, man. I, I would say. Do you hate white people? Um, that's, that's a, that's, I mean, you, we yes, call, my instinct is to say yes, but he, I don't hate, because you, I don't you hate qualified. white person, I don't hate white person, white person, right. white person, 
singular. Right. You qualified your misogyny. That you know, you said you're better with it. You've got a system that you understand sex and and women with. It's your it's your own. It's based in truth. Look, man. Black people, um, I I I don't like to think in terms of like being a victim and being black, dude. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing I try to get white people to understand, Mark, is that um, y- 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 white is a is a is a fluent concept. It's an idea. White to us, and I, I've said this a few times, but here's what white is to us: the decency that nature has given the Jews in their plight. The decency is to have a villain in both plights. Moses, there was Pharaoh. That nigga looked like Yul Brenner. Mm-hmm. Yul Brenner was the evil force yeah. holding you down. Yeah. And God freed you. <laughs> God <laughs> said, no, Jews, you must go. Yeah. Okay? Thank God. Thank God. Yeah. Then it's the Holocaust. Mm. Hitler, Hitler. He was a bad one. Hitler and his crew were the it, it was e after the war it was against the law you can't even have the mustache no more yeah you can't even rock that yeah. you rock that that's not a law but it's an understanding it's, it's un, you just yeah. don't rock it sure. that nigga yeah. is the devil yeah okay right. that mustache is the devil right hitler then the devil right so that what that enables you to do is move on mm-hmm. move it mo- mm-hmm. enables you to move on okay meaning i i don't have to hate every german I don't have to be bogged down. After the Holocaust, being a fucking Nazi was criminal. To this day, if they find out you used to be a Nazi, you get fucked over. You can't even apologize. Yeah. Oh, no, no I only put a couple in ovens. You. No, no, no. You're done. That's right. Okay? Even if you're 100 years old, yep. you're going to jail. They, you're, you're fucked. Yeah. That, 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 which is great for the spirit of being Jewish. It's great. It's just like, we went through this. Yeah, we went through this, but we know our, we know what exactly what happened. Yeah. We know exactly how many people it happened to, and we know exactly who the fuck did it. Yeah. So it enables you to have a chapter in a book. Yeah. Uh, when I start off with white people, I'd say, look, white is, is the only thing we got from slavery. We don't have a, a we have a, a, a finished date, questionable start date, questionable amount of people that died, uh, questionable effect on our minds. Um, when we were freed, it was like, bye, nigger. Nice talking to you. Yeah. Okay. Um, you, you live, you've been living this way 400 years. Now we expect you to live, uh, wonderfully now. And, uh, what we did to you is not criminal. And, and the only thing left is your skin so you have the skin color of the enemy so every white person is hitler's mustache really to my to my gut every white all white skin is that on some level on some level Um, really yeah but you're not my oppressor like so it's, it's for me when i say white i don't i hate that i always hate it when i watch geraldo rivera um, back in the day, and used to have racial conversations. Mm-hmm. And the race thing would be today on Geraldo, we're going to have a race debate. It's, uh, you know, Negro, John Nig- Negroin from Negroin University. He's been at fucking, you know, <laughs> Negropolis State. <laughs> he has a doctor in niggertude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Versus Troy, who thinks all niggers are. Have sickle cell anemia. But what I think the the, the the sexism analogy is that is is around the objectification that people are judging just because you're black and that black represents a certain thing. I, it's 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 the thing of when you get a black person that thinks that they have a white position, they're not nice. Black cops are really hard dudes. Black bosses are hard because they have this thing where they have to prove something it's inferiority to me it's like do i want fucking do i want white people giving me equal right like what it's so do i want a white guy apologizing for slavery i don't i think that i have a a equality or 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 a a non-equality based on person to person fucking thing 
And I think that black people have been put in a position where we have been given something that can be taken away. And that's the mean after having been stolen and de- demeaned and dehumanized, then all of a sudden you are given. This? I, I think that the freedom in which black people have is is it, it it's it's in the context, man. It's conditional. It's, it's conjecture. Uh huh. It, it doesn't exist. Yeah. It's it's a made up theory because it's based on love that we don't have for whatever reason that is whatever reason um you know i think black people are kind of like um uh, uh sylvester stallone at the end of first blood part one yeah you ever see that movie i don't think so you never seen first maybe blood i part did one? i can't remember it's shit fucking not operating at your level of intelligence no no Martin. no you no, should no. saw that fucking movie i'm sure i saw it many times wait, what happened the scene it? is this at the end when he goes, you know, I just want this country to love me as much as I love it. He was this Vietnam guy and he's yeah, just oh, yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. ranting yeah, 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 about yeah. why does the country hate me for for doing what I was told to do. In Vietnam, right. I, black people, I, I, I'm i not speaking for all black people, but I feel that way. It's like, why the fuck do you hate me, motherfucker? After what, Black people should be flying shit in the buildings all day long. We should be insurgents. <laughs> we should be killing white families. But we're not. <laughs> We're not. We're fucking good, man. And, and, and we get treated like dog shit. And we're always trying to figure out, uh, how to get white people to fucking, and like a lot of white people, I, I got that, 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 I got that fucking monkey on my back where it's like, you know, don't fucking, you know, if a white guy goes, you know, you're very, shut the fuck up, nigga. I don't need you to fucking validate me, bitch. You know what I'm saying? I don't care about your fucking love for me. You know what I mean? Stop. We try to work for this, this, this love that it ain't gonna happen. And I don't want no legislated love. I don't want the fucking N word in my life. If you feel nigger, you could call it flowers and pudding, but it's fucking feeling like nigger. So the N word, I fucking, I gotta listen to the N word describe a word that I've never even heard before the N word was this. I never heard, I never heard anything where I go, okay, put nigger there in place of that word. But the N word was invented so that you can say nigger somehow. So you found a way to fucking say nigger. And I never heard nigger like I hear the N word to describe nigger. <laughs> it's, it's some tricky horse shit. It's shit I learned in Boston. It's shit, it's shit that I want all black people to learn. It's, it's passive aggression. It's, 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 uh, it's, uh, what's, what do you call it? It's, it's covert racism. How the fuck do you have a fucking racial conversation with somebody, right? Yeah. Who don't admit that they're racist. To, how the fuck can I talk to a white person and go, you believe in racism? Yep. You believe that there's, there's unjust things happening or unjust things happening to black people? Mexicans all over the world? Yes. Are you racist? No. Racism is like Bigfoot. Like, we know it's here. <laughs> I've never no. seen it. <laughs> Only racist I see is fucking this asshole with a sheet on. But there's no, there's no functionally intelligent fucking guys who walk around and go, I hate niggas. I hate spicks. I hate chinks. But they're liars, man. It's like we're not going to heal this thing until two things. One, black people got to stop lying about how we feel and white people got to stop lying about how they feel. And we come together and we, and we discuss it because this shit ain't going to stop until black people find a way. To forgive this country for what it did, it, 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 it's it's a aching. That's the anger to forgive the country for what it did, and without white people's, um, this is how deep white is. Hey, when'd your family get here? Got here in 1906. Uh, first person straight off the boat from Italy, and uh, now I'm calling you a nigger. Like I'm better than you. Yeah. Are you serious? My family's been here since 1619, <laughs> bitch. Making this country wealthy because it's got free labor. It's just collecting money. We are you fucking serious? And we get a hard to, a hard time. And you get here, your skin's white, and you treat me like shit. You motherfucker. You're telling me though that growing up in Boston, you never personally experienced overt racism. Overt once, uh, just twice. once. South 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 East, South Boston. Right. One time that affected me. Um, when this kid, it was a summer camp. I think I was ten. 
And this kid called me a nigger. This, this little white kid called, he, he called me a nigger. It was a game he played with me. Called me a nigger and ran. And I chased him. And when I, and he ran, and he ran to where there was adults. And I grabbed him. And when I put my hands on him, um, he screamed like Banshee, you know? And, uh, and I got thrown out of camp. I, I'm like, he called me a nigger. It's like, so I, I learned a lesson. What did you learn? That I learned they that thought I, you were one I, too? Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. That, yeah, nigga. Like, <laughs> I learned yeah. that yeah. Um, a lot of things I learned about racism that you don't learn unless you live in a place like Boston. Boston's the worst. It's the worst. You can't, you can't learn it down south because it, you did, in, in a weird way, living down south, you actually have a, it's a, actually a great point. You, you, you know, I back in the day, I get sprayed by a hose. Well, yeah, there's and a dogs. That I I actually did a line where I said, "Down south, there's an ignorance that runs so deep it actually has integrity." There's a history to it. Yes, it is. It is. Hey, nigger, and you go, "Hey, white boy." Right. And then here's what I'm gonna do to you. And yeah. Here's what you better hope I don't. It's, it's out. It's not covert. It's, it's, it's historical. Exactly what it is. It's historical. Whereas in Boston, it's all fucking suppressed. It's, I've it's, never seen a city hide its black people like Boston. And then when you learn certain things, look, like the busing thing. Look, what, what here's what I learned out of all of this time that they wouldn't teach you. That I don't understand why they won't teach you is the busing. The Boston busing problem was this. They teach me as a Boston black kid. I hate white people, and that's what I'm supposed to do. They racist. They this. They that. Um, but, but what it is, is it was a design condition that, that poor white folks and poor black folks couldn't fight. It was, it was certain people on working on a higher level. Uh, the Boston, the, the South Boston High was a civil servants exam school. It, it taught you how to be a cop, how to be a fireman, how to be an EMT. It taught you how to pass the civil service exam. That's all it did. So what it did, it didn't prepare you for college. It prepared you to work as a fireman. That's why it was all these Irish firemen, all these Irish uh, 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 policemen, you know, all these times. It was all mixed, man. And when they stopped busting these niggas in, they were busting out jobs. So now there's going to be some nigger cops. And some nigger, you know, cops were the family business. So it was South politics and, yes. and, and power. Yes. I mean, you look at you look at the Kennedys, you know. But at the end of the day, I learned a lesson after that. I said, I'm not. I'm if I can, if I can, and I think this slowed me down a lot mentally, man. Um, and then I, I got in trouble with the law when I was young, and I learned For something what? about anger. I, statutory, I had a statutory rape thing when I was like I was 17, and um, me and my friends, you know, fucked this girl and. And then this is a long story short to be this is a long story short. But basically, me and my friends hanging out, bumped into two girls. Yeah. Uh, my mother was out of town. So I had the house to myself. And, you know, we brought them back and we had a good time. Yeah. And, then, you know, dropped them. Everybody seemed to be happy. Um, a afterwards, you know, you don't know about not kissing and telling, you know, when you're young, you're like, yeah. hey, man, oh, we had a great time. This girl sucked the dick. And did, did. We sure. basically were doing a porno. Yeah. And so we told the wrong people, and those people said, "Ooh, all right, I know that girl." So instead of like just saying, just taking advantage of the fact that she was just a natural hoe and doing a little work, it was like, "Hey, I heard what you did in Boston. Why don't you do it to me? Well, I'm gonna tell everybody." So, so they did it, and she's like, "I mean, fair to her, you know, she had she had to she had to protect herself," and she's just like. Uh, crying and emotional about what sh what's now imminent. Like, what is everybody going to come right. fucking blackmailing me for get their dick sucked? Yeah. So she cried to her brother and said, oh, man, I got raped today. And her brother went to go fuck these people up. And then as that's going on, he's fucking, this is a week after or two weeks after we was messing with. So after, the, you know, after that situation, she's like, uh-oh, okay, I got raped today. And then it's like, Oh, well, I, I got raped last week, too. So How old was she? 15. Yeah. 15 and 17. But I, I went to jail for that, but I, I always, I, it was a weird thing. How long were you in jail? Two months. Uh, 60 days. Yeah. Because it was like, I had I got lucky. It was, it was, it's weird. I have this on my record, but I got lucky in terms of this. It's Suffolk County. And I know guys uh, that have gone to jail for the rest of their life. I happen to have um, bad lawyers, but a, a great judge in jail. What was that like? It was it, it was more fear than they they send us to a place called um, Concord. 
yeah. MCI Concord yeah. was very dangerous because it was, I guess, you you see Star Wars, right? Yeah. It, it's, it was like, you know that planet that, um, yeah. where everybody was hanging before they went to go off into the other shit in that in the solar system where yeah. you're playing the band and yeah, 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 where yeah. you from I'm from the Mogo system right 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 That's, but MCI Concord was like that it was like murderers arsonists uh, fucking uh, gamblers everybody everybody from the worst crime to the, to the least right was sent there it was just what? It was, but did they send people who didn't have long sentences there? Or? That's what I'm saying. Right. So guys who were actually sentenced to 60 days um, were sent there. Kids. I mean, and it was my worst nightmare. Meaning, I was not a jail guy, man. I I just wasn't a jail. I was like, this was. I don't even know what the biggest. It's like. Well, how'd you handle it? What went down? Did it get fucking bad? I'm a big guy. Yeah. And I'm a funny guy. Yeah, I, I mean, I was funny. Yeah, and I was big, so if so, it, it, the biggest thing was that I had a rape beef over my head. Yeah, and the idea is that you know those guys get a bad time in jail, and I'm like, oh man, I'm what what's gonna happen? I mean, you gotta understand, I was not fit for that. Yeah, um, I don't know, think some, anybody is. Uh, some people are. Some people are prepared to go to jail for things that they do. Uh, gangsters are ready for. No, jail. no, I get what you're saying. But I, but I, mean, I mean, I, I to be a kid in jail. Yeah, I mean, I was a kid, dude. I mean, and you know, whatever. I mean, so, um, when I get there, I, I'm not trying to be hard because I know I'm not hard, but I'm just trying to be right, and I'm yeah. just trying to go. Oh man, <laughs> don't I'm, fuck me. I'm hurt. I'm, I'm. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. I'm in jail, man. I don't. No, but I did all my soul searching because he sentenced us. It was weird. He he was doing us a favor, but the only thing he did really wrong was it's I'm an adult and it's on my record for the rest of my life. Um, and and people not un unlike murder, it's like murder. There's a there's a story. Yeah. Like you go, I I went to jail for murder. What happened? I was fighting a guy and and his head hit the hydrant. And yeah. He, he was like, oh, okay. <laughs> There's a there's stories. <laughs> yeah. You, you, know, yeah, you hear yeah. rape, you go, Oh God, he's took pussy. You go, yeah. wait, no, there's Yeah. There's the levels. story is just a, a lie already. Like whatever the story is, it's yeah, gotta be. You're a rapist. No, yeah. no, wait. No, yeah, no, no. I, I, I was seventeen and my dick went into a fifteen year old now. The rest of the story is the story, but I'm I didn't go to jail for taking pussy. Now right. whatever mental there's all kind of mental shit that can happen to a woman under even any circumstance, whether she gives it up or not. Right. It's like psychologically, I don't know what that effect is. I'm not trying to be innocent sexually because I was doing some deviant shit, but it wasn't taking pussy. It was having fucking, a good time. Yeah. Whatever. Train, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Which, yeah. which ultimately in jail, I'm, I'm keeping my head low. I'm, I'm, I'm playing basketball. I'm whatever. I'm just living. And, um, and so these guys, these 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 uh, guys that kind of had a heavy rap, and they were there because they were they were transferring these guys to another prison, and they all were friends. I think they all had did the, the same crime or some shit. They was they were tough guys. Yeah. They were all named after southern states and shit. It was like these guys and they white guys, black guys. No, uh -huh. I was no, I don't you know answer to white guys if you're black in prison like yeah. white people that we play ball together. But what you did was you yeah. plus conquered was the place where. It wasn't a those gangsters were there, but it wasn't a whole lot of gangster shit because people were being assessed on where they were going next. So you either could go to Walpole, see the junction, or you could go to fucking a, a so Knoxbury hold, Farm, right? Holding station, holding station. Mm, yeah. So uh, uh, these uh, these guys, they said, look, what, what's going on with you, man? And I go, what, what? I'm going, oh man, I'm going, what's? Oh. He goes, they go, well, um. What you in for? I go, well, I mean, this is the title of my crime, and yeah, and they go, well, and I'm, and they walk, and they making me walk around the yard with them, yeah, and, I, and and I'm like, oh god, they're gonna probably walk me to this blind spot here, and they're gonna do something. Oh god, <laughs> they go, oh man, talk. And they used to call me Heavy D, yeah, and Heavy D, hey man, come here, Heavy D, let me talk to you for the. Uh, <laughs> so it's like four of them. Yeah. We just walking around the yard, and I go, well, I did this, and this happened and then the boom and then the boom and then they go after like two walks around 
They go, you in here for pulling a motherfucking train? You in here? I see they, and they go, they go, everybody in this motherfucker did that shit. And you in jail for that shit? <laughs> you in jail for doing what motherfucking niggas do? <laughs> and I go, I, yeah. <laughs> and they just, they said, they gave me a pass. They go, look, don't let me ever hear you locked up again. I said, thank you. <laughs> ever since then, life got better. But then I had a friend, life didn't get better because he the nightmare of jail got to him mentally and he never could get out of it he wouldn't take a shower and he he um who this guy my uh, co-defendant as they would they would say the my kid? friend my best friend one the of my 15 best year friend. old or the other guy there the, were three one, it was two it, it was five of us um five five guys two girls yeah okay and the other girl didn't put up any Right. She didn't put Charging. up the charges right. and it was so, I mean, whatever. So, so one, of, so your friend, he it my him. my they, you know, my friend, and they would call him my co-defendant, you know. Yeah. And uh, he thought he was going to get raped in the shower every day. That was, every day was rape in the shower. He couldn't when he was there. When we were yeah. both there at the same time. And did it happen? It's just like you go there and all you've been watching is MSNBC, and sure. it's like someone's going to shank me in my neck. So you just wear. A f every day you just wear a fucking phone book collar because you go somebody's gonna and it's like dude take off that phone book no no i won't take it off someone's gonna stab me in my neck he would always think someone's gonna get him and and he wouldn't shower and these guys man they want their lives there's guys in there and look uh, just because i'm in there for for 60 days doesn't make me less angry about it because you're in there for 25 years, but I do know a guy in for 60 days, you make a guy that's in for 25 years happy. You deal with your shit differently than that guy. Yeah. And he was um, in a position where he's, he's smells really bad in front of guys that are doing 25 years. You have to no live one, every day. No one wants to, yeah. you know. So I, he goes, tell your co-defendant. They keep saying my co-defendant. So I was like, I'm like, man, dude, like you gotta. I'm not gonna say his name. Whatever. Yeah. But he says, I'm like, man, you gotta take a shower, man. These guys there. Come on, man. He goes, fuck you, man. You act like you like it in here. I go, no, but I'm saying like you can take a shower. <laughs> like take a fucking oh, no. shower, man. Yeah. Like, they're gonna kill you. You know, they start throwing piss on them, and and uh, they started throwing piss on him. Yeah, to make him take a shower. Oh. And he just he wouldn't take a shower and. Eventually, they like you know. Eventually, it became torturous, and it was torture for him for at least forty-five of the sixty days, and and, and things that he's been right since. He, he he, the next time I seen him after we got out, he was he came to my house like with a fur coat. He had a fur coat and like and like it was like boxer trunks and shoes. It was weird, and he was talking about. What if Jesus was something other than being Jesus? Like, what if Jesus was a pimp, man? You know. So he snapped. He 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 snapped, and, and you know, you talk about um. In terms of trying to have my mind deal with feeling like a victim, you know, feeling like my life has been really ruined, you know. Yeah. I go okay. Look, it's it's God's design and this is this is what i came up with to help me one if i was a 15 year old girl and that was happened to me i might do the same thing that helped me i go okay two i could have been in there for 10 years because the, the 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 crime of statutory you can get 10 years period i got 60 days with one year probation and i was done so, so you, your boy though he got fucked up and he never fucking bounced he back. never bounced back he, he he this is my best friend when i was a kid you know? But it's it's weird. It's interesting because he did it to himself, and that you know your system of thinking, that your ability to put things in perspective, as bizarre as it may be, uh, in, in terms of how you make an understanding for your life, he was not able to do that. And I wasn't able to do that either. I naturally was able to do it, but I I I wasn't natu I wasn't able to deliver it as a mental place you know right um to him to anybody even right. to myself i just oh. naturally because i didn't have a father which was a whole nother story i always kind of recently um i just realized i didn't have a father i always got through it and didn't care but i recently said wow this is what you need a father for you need him 
you need a better man when you when you don't have any more understanding of how to fabricate how to be a man so but the, the last part of how i s- stop from hating this girl and not victimize is that i go look there's a lot of women who get raped you know that the the definition of it uh humanity taken from them like that mm. and uh i think that it's god's way of evening out meaning if women have to walk around and live the idea that a motherfucker might jump from behind a bush and with a knife to the neck and say, give me your pussy against the wall. God has to even it out by saying oh, some of us will get charged with rape and didn't do it. So essentially in the, in the theory of balancing out, I, I got raped because it's like. But I was involved. It's not like I was just walking on the street whistling yeah. and a bitch just go, he raped me. Yeah. It's more or less. Yeah. I didn't take pussy, but I I got in trouble it, and have that word attached to my life. Yeah. And, and, and I could have, if they wanted to take it to that place, possibly they could have just been like, you took it. We think you took it. I was lucky that it was just it was it was statutory. And, and, and basically I got through life and I didn't have to learn any more lessons, yeah. but I'm still kind of living that thing for the rest of my life. If I, but for the rest of a woman's life, it follows her. If that happens to her, if, it, if a rape happens to her. So I'm, I'm I, I know it seems well, crazy, actually- but I'm saying it's a balance of what can happen to me as a dude, like a woman, God didn't make it. So a woman could jump out of bush and go, give me your dick against your will and yeah. you not laugh yeah you know it's <laughs> <laughs> the only way we can see how serious it is <laughs> you, you yeah. know is, but, but it's that. interesting because it, it provided you with a little insight and some sensitivity to women absolutely Dude, when i talk shit let me tell you man ultimately i i love my mother man i love my i i this is so condescending the shit I say about women is women is based on how bad I feel for what they are. It's a sad creature. They bleed every month. They <laughs> sit down to pee. Like how vulnerable do you feel when you sit? How t- when you sit down to pee for whatever reason? Like if you you want to take a shit. Guy. I really thought this was going to go a different direction. You you really you really right? You this really, is why you love your mother. I love my mother because. <laughs> She, I grew up with no dad, right? She's my Where mother and my dad? father. Uh, he just was, what, it, look, he was not there like anybody, whatever reason. Did you ever find him? Uh, why would I? I didn't want to find him, no. Right. Because you know why? I, I realized what, look, a father is a... Uh, out of curiosity, you see what you... What, not even, i tell you why. Uh, I just realized learning, uh, you know, I got denied uh, entry to Montreal recently because of, cause of that. I've been to Montreal a million times, but at this, what, for some reason, well, now with all these computers and everything, yeah. it's just like they, you, you know, they're not telling your story. It ain't a book. It's just you've been charged with this, and boom, and you went to jail for that. Went to went to try to do Montreal this year, and they turned me back. So on the way back, I was driving things. Was, I was losing. the rape thing. Yes. Shit. Yeah. Um. So you know, I'm driving back, and mentally, uh. I had uh, reached almost the, the 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 acme of my madness that I had on my own, and I and I driving. Got, what do you mean? When you're driving back, you're hallucinating. I, I'm hallucinating. I'm thinking of things. I'm thinking of my, one of my pets that I loved that got yeah. killed. I'm I'm thinking about. I'm feeling sorry for myself. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking, oh man, it's just why do I need it? Why, why, you know? I'm starting to think about God, like you know, really, uh, uh, you know, my mother's telling me, saying things to me, like she's being motherly. She's saying, you know, hey, look, God takes things away from you, so your hands are empty to hold better things, and you know, all of that kind of advice stuff. And yeah. I and I broke down, uh, like the next day. I got home, woke up, talked to my mother, was talking to my mother, and I realized that I don't have a father. I realized and what a father is, it's a, an it's a older man who just loves you and gives a shit. And, and, and men, when you fall, men say, get up now. Then you see what's injured. When, when, but a woman, my mother wants to heal me, for, stay down, check your wound. Let me see what's injured, then let's get you up. 
But let's make sure you don't get up first because if you, you could be hurting more if you get up now. A father, I just never had a, an adult man older than me that could just, I could just look at like, this is my mentor. I started getting emotional. I'm getting emotional now because I, I went my whole life. This was recently. This is like last week. This is last week. Just now. 40 years old. And I realized at 40, the concept of what a father was. Yeah. And that I didn't have it my whole life. And it's been killing me. Like I, when I first learned, I finally learned that because I was always trying to be logical to what a, a look, a, let me tell you, it's easy to not be in a child's life. A sperm could go on the floor. It's in you. If you if you come inside of a bitch you don't care about, it's the same thing as coming on the floor. So if you come inside of a woman that you don't want to be with, yeah, and she goes, "I'm pregnant," yeah. you go, "Well, th- you know, th- here's the sperm, bitch." Yeah. So I realize anybody could be my father. I didn't have even a father figure, a mentor. I was raised by other men. That I watched, um, right? People to, you picked that you identified with. Or you that saw, I just watched and saw, said, saw he's strength cool. In. Let me try to copy what he is. And, but in that conversation with your mother, I mean, what you know, it was a sadness or anger. I mean, what you it know, was sadness for her. It was sadness for me. It was sadness too, because I have a lot of issues with God. I I, I really desperately want to believe in God. I desperately want to believe in. And I go for what I want out of life, and I this makes I know this seems a bullshit, but I just want I'm the only one in my life of people that that I that can I'm the only, unless somebody hits a lottery, I'm the only one for about seven or eight people that could help elevate life because I'm in show business and I've been in it 18 years. Uh, my mother works and she's going to work till she dies unless I make it. Um, my, one of my good friends, he works and he's going to work till he dies. My girl, she's, she has a show business like heart, but you know, her kid, you know, a couple of comics that are good friends of mine. It's like, if it ain't me, dude. It ain't going to be be nobody. And I I just want that. I just want it for them. I I always thought to myself, like, uh, I could change now. I could go, okay, well, uh, I'm going to take it in the ass. Like they say you're supposed to in show business. I'm going to take it in the fucking ass. Do whatever's necessary. Yeah. And if I take it in my ass now at 40 and realize, and realize that it wasn't, it's like, this ain't so bad. I'm yeah. taking it into my ass. <laughs> I got a $2 million check. My mother got a house. And my ass is, it ain't even that. It's just right in my ass. It's not even hurting. That that I'm going to be even more miserable because I should have been some, I didn't have enough sense or a mentor to say, take it in your ass uh, yeah. at 20. Right. So I'm going to go, if I'm wrong now, I can't live with myself. I got to so ride you, this out. I got to ride this out. I got to ride it out. And I and I don't know if it's going to pan out. And I really would love for it to pan out, but it it might not. And it made me sad because my mother, she's diabetic and I'm diabetic, okay? And uh, I cut my my foot. And I I think this got me emotional too. Mm. I cut my foot, and, you know, you cut your foot as a diabetic. Um it's dangerous. I cut my foot, you know. Uh, the ravages of diabetes haven't started truly hitting me hardcore. Starting to hit my mom's, you know, feet looking bad, and uh, you know she's limping. And she's breaking down. I'm watching her break down. Mm. And uh, I cut my foot, man, and she she jumped on. She just was mom. She cared about my fucking feet, and I'm looking at her feet, you know, swelled up and. And she just was making sure my feet were okay. And I'm just like, what the, What for? Like, like I suck. <laughs> I'm like, I suck. I go, my mother's still looking after my feet. And I'm like, I just want to look after her feet. But I would never motherly be able to look after her feet. I can only financially look after her feet. Get her the best foot doctor. 
money's no object medicine yeah 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 great bed yeah yeah whatever techniques yeah. out there yeah yeah and uh that's what i need to do to look after her but i don't have it like that yeah and and this is the only way i'm going to get it and uh it's just too late for me to real i'm realizing shit too late yeah that i'm driving you know back from uh you know montreal and i'm going what did did i just realize that I, I didn't have a father. Did I just realize that? Just now, yeah. What the fuck <laughs> is that good for? Are you fucking serious? What a waste of time. But that's not true. You know, it's interesting just from you talking to me, and, and I always knew this about you, is that you know, you're going to parent yourself one way or the other. That if you don't, if your parents were inattentive, or they were shitty, or they weren't there, or they were absent, you were going to figure out a way to take care of yourself, and you did. And that is what the gift of your brain is, is that all this shit, the way you talk about your life and how you make sense of shit, you talk like a father. You talk like a guy that's like, this is the analogy, this is the story, that this makes but sense. It's, but it's made me very, um, it's made me very logical. And it made me very, uh, f like, pain. Yeah. Emotional pain. Mark, this is where we are stripping down the animal part as opposed to stripping down the psychological part. Because remember, dude, I've already stripped myself down. You strip yourself down because you do too much thinking. So you, meaning, you look at yourself and if I go, you're a this and a that, Mark. You go, was that supposed to hurt me? Because I already discussed that with myself. I am a this and a that. What are you going to do? It's still going to hurt me. It, it, it'll hurt, but you'll go, I don't want to hear it. Yeah. I don't want it affirmed. Okay. But it's going to, it, you, you, you're not, you're self aware. There's a lot of people aren't self aware. Uh, yeah. They're psycho, they're, they're sociopaths. You know, I wish, I'm telling you, I wish I could take it in the ass. I wish, I tried to take it in the ass in 98. And I realized taking it in the ass hurt my heart. Yeah. Um, I wish I can, Steal jokes and and buy my mother a house based on the fact that I stole. I stole not only jokes. It's not like you stole knock knock jokes. You stole essence. You stole. You took it and you and you and you. It, there's no justice. There's nothing in this game of virtue. And I've only heard one story ever of virtue that paid off was uh, Chaz Palminteri, where he people were interested in Bronx Tale. Um, they wanted to do Bronx there, but he said, I want to play, um, I want to play the role he played. He played, uh, uh what, 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 the gangster. Yeah, the gangster. I forgot yeah. his name, but, uh, in the, in the movie. But he goes, uh, I, I'm, I have to play this. And people were like, I'll buy this script for a hundred thousand. He's like, can I play the, nope, uh, 500,000. Can I buy it? I just want to play the, and he went into the bathroom. He said, man, it's just like, maybe I should do it. And he stuck to his guns and he, De Niro, he goes, he goes, I just want to play the game. De Niro goes, play him. I'm going to play the bus drive. I just want to see this movie made. And it, and it panned out, but it's like, is that like the lottery? Meaning he hit the righteous lottery and everybody else is trying to scratch the, the righteous lottery oh, ticket. And, um, a little bit of luck, right? You know, and I'm like, I'm like, uh, you know, I just want to, I don't want to be wrong forever. I just want to, you know, look, it, I think in this business, you only got about, four or five times to get on the amusement ride I you know, know. Yeah. um maybe yeah. i think i've been on the, the ride twice yeah maybe. and me too uh, and when you get off the ride you got to get back in line and go if i want to ride this ride again i gotta stand in line it's long line <laughs> and the thing about the the roller coaster is it, it's interesting it clicks yeah. up the click up is just great like you're like yeah, yeah. Oh. i feel it yeah, yeah, yeah yeah i feel it I people feel, are excited yeah they yeah. see me they see i'm clicking up mm -hmm. they see i'm on to come up they stay feeling yeah. good they're feeling it's feeling right mm. um and then when you know the first time you're on the ride you go okay what do i do and then you go wee <laughs> and you hold your hands up and then all the money flies out your pocket <laughs> and then all oh, everything's gone when you yeah. get off you go in, in the ride and then it does that last little little stoppage thing and you go and you go everybody off <laughs> and you go oh shit and then you there's a long line to get back on yeah. and then you're in the back of the line going this fucking ride ain't even that great <laughs> and you're like 
<laughs> that was it? Am I standing in line? And then you go, okay, my second time, I'm going to get in line again. I'm going, I'm going to make this ride better for myself. <laughs> yeah. Click, 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 click. Okay. And okay. then, you know, now you got a, a, a pilot deal and it clicks up and you, you go, try, you yeah, at the it. top and you go, okay. this time I'm going to put my hands in my pocket and I'm not going to enjoy the ride as much. <laughs> You go down and you're not going weed. It's just air. <laughs> Holding on to your face. money. Hold on to your money. Then you stop again, and it's just like you've got a little more money, but you didn't have any fun. Now yeah. you're in line again, <laughs> waiting, and you're behind a fucking cocksucker. You know who's who, doing your act? You go. I, can I get in front of you? Yeah. You fucking cocksucker. And then. I don't know I, if I get on the ride again, dude. I'm, I'm probably not going to get back on, but I don't. I'm waiting. I'm All right. Well, line. let's see if we both get on the ride. Thanks for talking to me, Patrice. All right, man. Rest in peace, Patrice O'Neill. You are loved, and you will be missed, and you will be remembered.